What's good, y'all? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we got a special one, an awards show. Now, usually with award shows, people dress up, suit and tie, y'all, to this, that, and that. And I kind of wanted to do that for this video, but then I remember, I haven't had to wear a suit and tie since high school graduation. That was three years ago. I don't got that no more. So instead, I settled for the team no overtime merch. Link is in the description if you want to copy something. So today, we're doing the mid-season NBA awards. Now, this is important. I got to let y'all know two things right off the bat that are very, very important for the rest of this video. And the first would be, this is me saying, right now, in the middle of the season, if the season were to end today, who do I think wins each award, okay? And that's very important because I'm going to say it, there are some guys that I think win the award today that I don't think are going to win it at the end of it, the whole season. And I'll tell y'all that once we get into it. But it's literally halfway through the season, who deserves MVP, who deserves Rookie of the Year, and so on and so forth. So keep that in mind. It's not my predictions for the end of the season. So I don't want to see y'all when the awards come out like, oh, look, Kenny, you were wrong. No, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying halfway through the season, who deserves each award, okay? And the second thing is this is literally my opinion. I'm going to give y'all numbers and stuff, but ultimately, we may disagree on who deserves MVP. There are a lot of candidates this year. We may disagree who wins rookie of the year. There are a lot of candidates this year. I'm giving y'all numbers, but it's still my opinion. All right, so we got the major category of, of awards, but then I threw in some spicy ones that I thought of myself. So let's get into the big one, MVP. The first MVP candidate is LeBron James. LeBron James having one of the best statistical seasons of his entire career, definitely the best statistical season since his 2013 MVP. And he's also leading his team, the Cleveland Cavaliers, 20, to a 26 and 14 record. The next candidate is James Harden, who had a legendary season last year, but it was overshadowed by, of course, Russell Westbrook averaging a triple double. This year, he's leading his team to a 25 and 9 record when he's in there, and he has a top 10 offensive team of all time. And the last candidate, as Kevin Durant, who's having a great season and actually having one of his best defensive years of his career. So my winner for MVP is James Harden. At one point in the season, he was averaging the most assists and the most points per game, and that is unheard of. As I said in the intro, his team is a top 10 offensive team of all time. But here's, here's what I'm saying. If the season ended right now, I think he deserves MVP. But at the end of the season, again, I do not think he's going to win it. So right now he's out with an injury that's going to at least keep him out for two weeks. But some people believe that it could keep him out for all up to six weeks. Which ultimately, if you're going to be missing six weeks, your candidacy for any award is going to go in the tank. So at the end of the season, honestly, I think LeBron will win the award. But if we were going to end it right now, I think it's got to go to James Harden. Next award is the Most Improved Player Award. The first candidate is Aaron Gordon, who went from about 13 points per game, five rebounds a game, to 19 points, eight rebounds a game, has really carved himself as the number one option in Orlando. The second candidate is Chris Stops Porzingis, who went from 18 points per game all the way up to 24 points per game. And the last candidate is Victor Oladipo, who went from 16 points per game all the way up to close to 25 points per game. This one is easy. It's gotta be Victor Oladipo. Oladipo. Now, this is one of the main reasons why I always tell y'all, hold out on calling players a bust. Now, I don't think anybody was calling Victor Oladipo a bust because he turned out to be an okay starter in the league, but he wasn't playing to second overall potential the first couple years of his career. But here we are in his third city and he's playing all-star level. That's why you gotta wait. Some players take years and years to develop into the player they're gonna be, and Victor Oladipo did that. From average starter to all-star in one year. Now, in the offseason, he put on, well, he made a transformation. He was kind of, he wasn't fat. Fat is the wrong word. But he had a lot of body fat that wasn't turned into muscle. In the offseason, he turned that into muscle. He's faster. He's more athletic. And ultimately, that's leading him to have the best season of his career. That's my pick for most improved player. Next, we got sixth man of the year. Our first candidate is Lou Williams, who's having the best season of his career, averaging about 23 points per game. Second candidate, Dwayne Wade, who's averaging 11.3. And third candidate is Rodney Hood at 14.5. Now, there are some players like Eric Gordon, who's having a phenomenal year, who people will have into consideration here. But since we've had the injuries in Chris Paul early in the season, and we've had the injury of James Harden now, he doesn't really register as a sixth man because he started over half the games this season. The award has to go to Lou Will. Now, understand, he dropped 50 last night, but he did it when he was starter. Um, but he has only started eight games so far this year out of the 40. So he's my sixth man of the year. He's having a career best three point shooting year when he's averaging the most three points he's ever shot in his career. 
It's wild to think of it, and I I'm so happy that him and the Clippers are in consideration for extensions because though he has been one of the best scorers in the league for a couple years now, he never really has found his home. He's been bouncing here and there. I hope he gets an extension for the Clippers and he can stay there and have a longer season or career there. Lou Will has to be my sixth man of the year. Now next, we got rookie of the year. This one of the best rookie draft classes in a while. A lot of people are out there producing for the team, but I has to narrow it down to three candidates. Candidate number one, Jason Tatum. Has come into it at 19 years old, but he looks like a grown man as he's helping his team become one of the best teams in the league. Candidate number two is Donovan Mitchell. Now, nobody expected him to be averaging 18 points per game at this part of the season, especially since in college he didn't shoot it this well. Well, he is the number one scoring option as a rookie for a team that's fighting for a playoff spot. And the third person is Ben Simmons, who's averaging 17 points per game, 7.5 assists, and 8.4 rebounds per game. I gotta give it to Ben Simmons. Now, this is another case where I'm giving it to a player that ultimately I'm not sure is gonna win it at the end of it all, because Donovan Mitchell averaged 24 points per game last month. And if he continues to average this, 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 he could steal the rookie of the year. But if the season were to end the day, I gotta give it to Ben Simmons because he's helping his team on every aspect of it. Points, rebounds, assists, and he's actually a pretty good defender for a rookie. Now, I understand that he's a red shirt rookie and some people don't believe that red shirt rookie should be able to win rookie of the year. I'm not one of those people. This is his first year playing against this type of talent. So I think he's legitimately a, a contender and he's my winner too. Defensive player of the year was a harder one for me. Um, and that, the reason for that is that the three candidates from last year have not really done it. Kawhi Leonard has been out for more than half the season. Rudy Gobert also out for more than half the season. And then Draymond Green, his statistical numbers aren't really there. And I'm not talking about surface level, de surface level defensive stats. We're not talking steals per game, blocks per game. We're talking about the advanced stats for Draymond Green. He's still a good defender, but he's not defensive player of the year defending. So I narrowed it down to three people. Here they are. The first guy being Kevin Durant, who's having the best defensive year of his career. Second candidate is Paul George. And the last candidate is Al Horford. Now, I was so unsure about this award. I went on to Twitter to ask y'all, who do y'all think wins defensive player of the year? And I would say like 80% of people said Kevin Durant. And I understand that he's having the best defensive year of his career. He's leading the league in blocks. But I'm going to give it to Al Horford, all right? If you think about it historically throughout um, defensive player of the year history they always give the awards to somebody who's on a top three defense and is the anchor you know who's the anchor of the boston Celtics defense it's al horford now the steals per game blocks per game aren't really there but i'm thinking about it on the level of marcus saw when marcus saw won defense player of the year and i think it was 2013 no he was not leading the league in blocks or steals or even contests but he led his team to one of the best defensive seasons in the league now, the Al Horford and the Boston Celtics are by far the best defending team in the league. So, so much that they have an average offense statistically, but their defense is so good that they're one of the best teams in the league. So, I got to go with Al Horford, and this is one that I don't feel super confident about, but that's who I'm giving it to. Next, we got Coach of the Year. Let's just get right into the candidates. My first candidate is Brad Stevens. Second candidate is Greg Popovich. And third candidate is Dwayne Casey. I'm giving this award to Brad Stevens. And the main reason is that, honestly, he's out coaching everybody. Now, Popovich is a guy that legitimately can win coach of the year every year. But I'm giving it to Brad Stevens because on opening night, they lost one of their two best players. And I was one of the people that thought, well, there's that season. There's the season. It's gone. It's trash now. But he's found a way to coach this team to the best defense in the league, first of all. Kyrie Irving is their starting point guard. And Kyrie Irving last year had one of the worst defending seasons ever. But this year, he's he's got Kyrie to defend. And he, if you look at the personnel on this team, you wouldn't really think that this is the best defense in the league. Yes, I think they have the personnel to be a good defending team, but not the best defending team in the league. And that means something. And he's leading this team to one of the best records in the league. So because of that, I'm giving it to Brad Stevens. Now, those are the major awards. But I did ask y'all on Twitter, what do y'all think of some, some lesser known awards? And the first one we came up with was, Comeback player of the year. Now, I got this on two tiers. I got this a season-long comeback player of the year and a kind of right-now comeback player of the year. The first one, season-long, has got to go to Tyreek Evans. Tyreek Evans had one of the best rookie seasons ever. And then after that, dip down, dip down because of injuries, because of inefficiency, dip down. But this year, the Memphis Grizzlies took a shot on him, giving him a one-year deal, and boom, he's back to averaging like 20 points per game. He's been basically their best player, and that's saying a lot because they got Marcus Gasol on their team. So he is my comeback player of the year for this first half but 
I have to talk about Gerald Green. I have to. Now, on the court, Gerald Green has been amazing in his first, I think it's, he's only played like eight or nine games so far this season. He's been amazing. But something deeper than that, I have not heard much about Houston since the big hurricane hit. And Gerald Green is giving back already. And that means something. Now, I understand this award show should be basically about stuff that happens on the court, but I have to talk about what Zero Green is doing to try to help the city of Houston, the cities that he's from, the city that he's playing for. Here's a clip of him with some people that are still struggling in Houston. Harvey, it, it, it's back the same, right? Everybody think it's back the same? I'm going to show y'all something that it's not. This is not the same. This is what... A Houstonian is going through right now. I feel okay. Okay. All right. I don't need your crap. My name is Joe Green. You know? We got you. Don't worry about I none of this, okay? I wish my son was here. I know, but we got you, okay? okay? You can't stay here no more right now, okay? We don't need you. We're going to probably put you in a hotel. It got, it's, it's got mold in there. It's not safe, okay? It ain't, it ain't, we, we don't need you to get somewhere nice to where it's, uh, you know, we, we, we can help get, we, 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 we going to take care of you, okay? We going to take care of you, okay? 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 I promise you, all right? Now, that really means a lot. Because of that, he's going to get our honorary award for Comeback Player of the Year. Let's move on to the next one. Troll of the Year goes to LeBron James. He's been trolling us. He's a free agent this offseason. And, well, he did things like put up a picture on Instagram saying he's the king of New York. People were like, oh, he may want to go to New York this offseason. And then he did some stuff where he's whispering in Lonzo Ball's ear. Now, we know exactly what he said now. But in the moment we did, he could have said, Lonzo don't worry, I'll be here next year. Troll of the year. He knows that we all wondering, where you going, Bron Bron? And he's playing right into it. Troll of the year, LeBron James. Worst hair. Alfred Payton, play the clip. Blocked his vision <laughs> or blocked the shot, one or the other. Yeah. The hair, look at the hair up in the air. And that's... Oh, that blocked him. Look. Well, he did not you know see what? the rim. Yeah, his hair. The reason he missed that shot. Cut your hair. And then John Isaac said he wanted to grow his hair like it, it, it's it's terrible over there in Orlando. Get well soon, Orlando. Um, I'm rooting for you, but ultimately he's like, ah. Uh. And last but not least, Dunk of the Year or my Dunk of the Year. Play the clip. The rim is crying. Thon Maker may want to retire after that one. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to my award show. In the comment section below, give me your awards and I'll pick some of my favorites for shout out of the day. Thank y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow.